Live is a show. Well, that's coming up next. This is a show called, but yeah, this is crime. The show. It's a show where I, Rich Slayton, read a true story about lawbreakers with his dick pic addicted co-hosts, Jonathan Shevsky. We tried to put him into rehab for it, but oddly enough, the Betty Ford Center doesn't have a dick pic wing. No. It's, and there is no rehab for di- dick pic addiction. It's, it's like they just try to show you more dick pics. Like, smoke the whole pack. And then you're like, I you need know, more dick pics. More! I have a cure for that, though. The music? Playing the music. Play the music, you fucker. Crime is the show that starts now. Oh, like, right now? Oh, yeah, yeah. Do your line. Oh, okay. Each week, Rich reads a real crime story. I don't know a word that rhymes with story. And my homie John always has the hot riff. He really loves it when you send. Don't send anything. Send them to me. Him. Don't Let you dare. Podcast at gmail.com. Yeah, don't you send Label anything. Label it John Chesky. He loves them. Make sure the lighting's really good. Hi, guys. In 55, 56 episodes, we've never messed up the intro, but... This week we did, but we wanted to just like show you that sometimes we're not perfect. That no one's perfect. That wasn't a mess up. That was what Yahweh wanted. Oh, Hashem yeah. begged for it. He made it happen. I, I I heard it. I heard it through the heavens, and I'm okay with it. Mostly because I'm here with you, man. I'm... And I'm going to be here with you on Saturday, March 17th for, for Crime, Crime Live! This is the actual time when we say the live part, not the part before the music. I gave us a free plug. Fuck but you off. know what? <laughs> Guess what? There are only, I think, about 15 tickets left for this weekend. Holy shit. Yeah, nice. People are coming out. It's going to be super bananas crazy. Uh, it's going to be Saturday, March 17th, 1030, at the Comedy Store with Jeremiah Watkins. Yeah. And I have promised, I have promised, and I will hold to this promise, that I will not be wearing a purple shirt on Saturday at the show. Why do I now, feel like you're going to be wearing a purple other, shirt? Other people might be wearing purple shirts besides me, like everyone in attendance, but I will not be wearing a purple shirt. Speaking of purple shirt, if you want, you can still get those last few tickets remaining. Half price promo code purple shirt at the comedy store. Do not wear a purple shirt, but I know you people have more balls than that. And you ladies, your ovaries are cooler than that. You're not wearing purple. Now, I have heard a rumor that there might be a special guest appearance from one of our good friends from C3, C3 Risk, Risk and Insurance Services. Services. Guys, I don't know if he'll be there, but I am encouraging Joe Earl to drive up from San Diego. Yeah, bring us some burritos. I'll take uh, uh, yeah, chili burritos. Yeah, it's going to be uh, California burritos that are cold, so the fries are soggy, no, but they'll still doesn't matter. taste good. C3 Risk and Insurance Services, guys. If you have insurance needs, car, home, auto. Live crime show insurance. Messed up introduction insurance, whatever it might be. <laughs> our friend Joe Earl at C3 will help you out. Go to C3insurance.com. If you get a policy from him, he'll give you a $25 gift card to from Amazon. Amazon. Then you can make sure you support that company that enslaves a ton of white people. It's really great. I think it's great. And just tell him Shevsky sent you. He loves me. Now, speaking of somebody who really enjoyed that last riff <laughs> this next guy is one of my best friends on the planet uh he just shot a pilot for comedy central because he's a bad motherfucker i don't know if i can even say that on the air but i'm doing it because i want to promo my boy here Aww. put your virtual hands together for our good friend ed greer hey guys thank you so much for having me down in the basement <laughs> The it's Comedy a dungeon. Store Dungeon. It's a dungeon. Making his okay. second appearance on the show, by the way. You might remember from the episode with Rube Burroughs. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I, uh, they unfolded me from the gimp cage. <laughs> <laughs> we just bring that out. It's like he's got a pilot to shoot. He can do that, or he can come back to the episode. <laughs> Otherwise, we just feed him through a hole. You can also door. check out uh, Ed's podcast, Nerd Goat, with our friend Ron Swallow, where comedians and other people, or just break people come on. Yeah, like an NFL star. Nah, people come yeah. on and pitch their favorite comic book character. Well, yeah, they come on. Uh, we have interesting people uh, discussing their favorite fictional character of all time. So we've had uh, James Bond, uh, uh, Elphaba from Wicked, <laughs> uh, Spider-Man, mm-hmm. you know, Batman, uh, a lot of people. Now, I wish that Han today's Solo. subject, normally I just interrupt with the name, but I have a little preamble today. I wish today's subject was just a fake character. Now I'm just going to, I'm going to, for legal purposes, I'm going to say that all of these crimes that have not been verified by a court of law are alleged because this guy's a litigious piece of shit. Uh, but guys, it's a special. We don't, we don't record Mondays. We're recording today because we had to get after this guy. We got to do it. So let's get going into this thing. Let's do it. Today's topic is Martin, America's fuckboy number one Scarelli. Oh, whoa. Wow. He, went like in the, he went like real time, huh? This is live. Was born on March 17th, 18, 1980-fucking-3 in wow. Brooklyn, fucking New York. I really hate this guy. <laughs> oh, he's from Brooklyn, of course. He's, he's a hipster. He's a piece of shit. Right, His guys? His parents, Albanian and Croatian immigrants. Oh, were... I don't know if I should hate him. I'm a liberal. I, I, I love him. He's an immigrant. He's the best thing that ever happened to this country. They were both part-time janitors. Yes. His father also working full-time as a doorman to provide for his four children. Should 
should have done it at the comedy store. He'd be on stage right now. Why are you a janitor with four kids? You're really ruining their lives. No, they, that's how they teach him though, the ethics of work and mopping. Oh, that really worked out in this one. <laughs> well, Martin spent his free time. <laughs> He's allegedly guilty. Playing chess with an older man in their building named Marty. Oh, that's at, nothing wrong with that. It teaches you about life and death and strategy. As they simulated war. <laughs> Marty educated Martin on the stock market by spanking him, leading Martin to bear to buy shares of Compaq when he was just 12 years old. In 1997, he bought stock in a newly public company called Amazon. Oh, fee! Uh, that, that all comes together. Yeah, Joe Earl will be stoked about this guy. It's like this is where you get your gift certificate when you get your policy. Martin briefly attended Hunter College High School, a public school for the gifted, but he was already focused on building an empire. So at 16 years old, he weaseled. Those are his words, Can by I the way. I just say I fucking hate people that want to build an empire? No offense to everyone out there building empire. <laughs> and no offense to the creators of the show, Empire. <laughs> oh, yeah, and nothing wrong with your show. And you're oh, building yeah. an empire off the show. Good, good work. Yeah, if the empire off empire, that's a fine empire. Is that not a turnoff, though, when you're getting to know someone? They're like, I want to build an empire. You're like, all right, I got to go. Well, I mean, to be fair, nobody who sets out to start an empire usually does one. And if they do, their empire falls pretty quickly. But the people that have successfully built improvs, 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 <laughs> improvs, started an empire of comedy. At 16 years old, this giant pile of douche weaseled, his words, his way into an internship at hedge fund at a hedge fund run by Jim Cramer, the host of CNBC's Mad Money, oh, who was known for smashing objects with a hammer, yelling stock advice, and publicly admitting to borderline illegal market manipulation. Really? I thought he was just the guy uh, in the development. Well, you know, he's uh, the Gallagher of the stock market. <laughs> That's so accurate. <laughs> He really is. <laughs> That's so funny. I never Maybe the Gallagher that. too. How is he not smashed? <laughs> how is he not the smashed Gallagher things too. up on the stage? It's Gallagher's brother, if he's that shady, right? Martin stood out mostly for his ability to spot small biotech scams. The vast majority, 85% of drugs in clinical trials, never get approved by the FDA, creating short-lived investment bubbles driven by lofty promises. That's the biotech scam? So just... what happens is... Uh, a biotech company will. What is a biotech company? Tell like our a company that and maybe makes me. usually, I mean, mostly pills and medications and things like that. Maybe makes other technology, like a winch for your arm, so you can have your arm work or whatever. Okay. But biotechnology. Do they sell it to the pharmaceutical companies? Typically, they sell. Well, typically, they are a pharmaceutical company that okay. then sell that to hospitals. Okay. Other so bi- when you say biotech, you're kind of saying like generally like the the pharmaceutical creator companies. of the. Well, maybe pharmaceutical companies is one type of biotech. Okay. But the creator of Biological technology. Listeners, did you get that? We're good. (laughs) Go on. So most of the drugs in clinical trials don't get approved by the FDA, but what will happen is a biotech firm will say, hey, we just solved uh, liver problems. And then they'll the the stock in that company will skyrocket. Oh, and then when the FDA um, doesn't approve it, the Scott the stock falls back down again. Oh, I'm so what Martin to see figured this. out day trading. Martin sniffed these out, passing the information along to investors at his firm who focused on shorting stocks. And a shorting is where you bet that a stock will go back down. It's a weird thing. Yeah, if you're looking at me like I'm crazy, that's a thing you can do in the stock market. Yep. You can go and, and make a bet that a stock will fall as opposed to investing in the stock itself. What's that called? Because it's I called what shorting. I gamble. Short, yeah, is it shorting only in Nevada yeah, sh- or what? How do you do this? Yeah, you go to the bike downtown, and uh, after, they, after, you, after you play a couple rounds of poker, then they take you to a back room, and they cut your legs off, and now you're shorter. That was fucking awful. <laughs> Martin, I need you to help me with your biotech. My legs have been chopped off. Get, get them made. So the front half of this is going to be a little uh, what's a little bit uh, financially tech heavy. Okay. Because that's a big part of the story. Also, shout out to my sister and all her friends at Booth in Chicago. Yeah, send us some clip pics. Or dick pics. No, you said you said, you said sister. No, my sister's sister not sending sister anything to you. To you. Well, you I mean, savage. Why you just, you animal. Saying, if you're putting it out there, you, you mentioned her on the show. I want to say a shout out to all of those because they're all in business school. Oh, oh yeah. And yeah. they all some, love all this, all this, all this technical send us financial some clips stuff. Whether with your pants suits I mean, on the bed. They worked so hard to be taken seriously, and that but they all also you want have a sexual. Clip. Ed, they have a sexual side that you don't want. They don't want you to ignore it. They want you to ignore it. I want. I want to ignore this whole chunk. But you can delete it if you want. Anyways, I'm going to be interrupting here and there so that our <laughs> listeners can keep up with some of your terms. And me too, possibly. Just for safety, in case I want to edit this in. Shout out to <laughs> and all her friends at Booth 
uh, in Chicago who are studying business because you're going to dig all this uh, ridiculous financial stuff we're doing. Yeah, thank you so much. I really respect the fact that you guys are just professionals and you know, you're just very And none square. of you send pictures of anything, yeah, ever. Yeah, you, you <laughs> ladies, are you're non-sexualized in my mind, I'll tell you that right now. Well, just like H- a man. HR approves of that section. That's right. <laughs> Speaking of sections that are approved on the midsection's my favorite. All right, go This on led to Martin's first brush with the law. In 2000, he told Kramer's Fund to short a biotech stock, and it immediately plummeted, which made them a lot of money. Like, okay. You bet that a I'm stock will go down. I'm too dumb for stocks, yeah. You bet that a, it's, it's a weird thing you can do where you bet that a stock will go down, and it's, if it does, you make money on it going down. It's basically what, what the guy did in the big short. It's right? like reverse investing. Okay, so, okay. That's yeah, a you're, you're it. it's like betting. It just you, have you bet against the team before? I have. I bet against the Patriots when they lost to the Giants. I bet against them. But what you're saying, Martin them. did. What you're saying, Martin did was he bet against this thing and had an influence on it going down. No, well, he, not he, yet. no, no, no. Yeah, he had his friends bet against. Something he was that an he intern knew. at a big financial firm, yeah. and he figured out this thing that happens with biotech stocks all the time that they often go up it like artificially and then fall back down. Yeah. And so he put his people on to, hey, bet on this one going down. Bet on this one going down because he was like, most of the time, these to- these stocks will go back down. Okay, cool. Is everyone on the in the internet caught up to what this is? All in favor, say aye. All right, let's do it. This Move led on. to Martin's first brush with the law. In 2000, he told Kramer to fund a short of a biotech stock and immediately plummeted. The SEC launched an investigation but eventually cleared him of wrongdoing. Because they thought it could be insider trading, right? Because mm-hmm. he worked somewhere he might have known what was happening. Mm-hmm. Soon after, he left high school. Enrolling in New York's Baruch College, where he earned a degree in business. Diploma in hand, Martin bounced around investment firms before striking it out on his own in 2006 when he founded his own hedge fund, Elia Capital Management. One year later, Martin bet $2.6 million. Jeez, that the market years old and he's doing millions of dollars? Well, now he's like 22. That's the same. Yeah. Is this the same? <laughs> it really is. That really is. Yeah, little babies making bets. 18 to 25, I pretty much like, right? I consider all the same thing. Yeah. The dumb piece of shit here. Martin bet $2.6 million that the market overall would decline. But the spring of 2007 saw a huge climb. Ah. The fund lost everything, including a $2.3 million lawsuit brought against Elia Capital by the investment bank used to place the bet. He was forced to move back in with his parents. So, oh wow! So he went like super rich to like mm-hmm. you ain't got shit, and you owe two million dollars. But luckily for Martin, but luckily, but luckily, <laughs> but luck, the but luckly boys. That's, but, us. that's our group, the but lucky boys. The but luck. I'm gone. <laughs> luckily for Martin, that bank, Lehman Brothers, the fourth largest investment bank in the U.S suddenly crumbled under the weight of the 2008 mortgage crisis. Oh, it's like when you're going to court to fight a traffic ticket and you find out the cop was ambushed. It's exactly like that for millions of dollars. He's not coming to court? I saved 300 bucks and my car insurance isn't going up. It was the largest bankruptcy filing in U.S. history. The next day, the global markets plummeted. It's actually, by the way, the Lehman Brothers failure is the beginning of the phrase too big to fail. Like that whole idea oh, that comes whole thing from, is from that. From this thing. Yeah. Oh, great. Not from his shitty thing. Yeah. That was a drop in the bucket compared to the mortgage crisis. Yeah. Martin's bet. So the next day, the global markets plummeted. Martin's bet was right, but just a year early. While he missed out on making a massive payday out of the misfortune of others, the Lehman Brothers collapse did mean that the $2.3 million judgment conveniently went away. Woo. Nah. Go ahead and wipe that sweat off your forehead with a really expensive Burberry napkin, Martin. Everything's fine. In 2009, with the market down over 50% from the peak Damn. that killed Elia Capital, Martin founded his second hedge fund. MSMB, named for Martin and his business partner slash childhood friend, started with $700,000 in investor capital. Do you know what a hedge fund is? I actually should have looked up the exact definition of a hedge fund. Knowing that I'd be on here asking. Yeah, I, on I behalf have. of the <laughs> listeners, I know. I just and I guarantee you right now, everyone from Chicago who's listening to this is like, it's it's so fucking easy yeah, what a hedge idiot. fund is. You're a tool. Yeah, they probably think I'm an idiot. Well, but I, I would love to hear it explained by somebody stupid. Like, hey, it's a bunch of guys. They got money. They put the money together. They say, hey, fuck this guy or fuck that guy, and then they make money. I mean, that's basically it. That like, is. You really just kind of nailed it. <laughs> yeah, right. There you go. Oh. Isn't that the whole stock market, though? It's just a hedge fund? Like, I'm like, what's the difference? Well, the hedge fund is pooling specific people's monies to do this shit. Like, the dude that holds the money in the CeeLo Dice game, he holds people's money? Yeah. There you go. 
Yeah, that's a hedge. It's fund. the guy. The hedge fund is, is a big version of the guy who holds the money. The Isn't dice. Is that game. what a mutual fund does? They hold the money in the game. And so, and a mutual fund is the guy who holds the money and says, "I'm not going to give you this money because you're going to blow it on hookers and dough, you dumb fuck." So you got to wait 15 years to get this money. That's what a mutual fund. is. A mutual fund is also where uh, you both put money into a pool so you can go for chaw for chaw. So <laughs> you, just you, want, mutually... <laughs> you just want. Sorry, mom and dad and Slayton's family. No apologies to fathers ever, but to all mothers out there, big sorries for you. So sorry, mm-hmm. mums. Cash in hand, he began to build the business. Soon he had new investors pouring millions into the company on the strength of MSMB's $35 million portfolio, the security of an independent auditor, and Martin's promise of huge returns based on his proven aggressive business plan of shorting healthcare and biotech stocks. What investors didn't know was that everything was a lie. This guy's a schemer. There was no independent auditor. There was no proven track record. And perhaps most importantly, there was no $35 million. Oh, you fucking uh. dick. In reality, the fund only had 700 Okay, but he, 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 was, he was conning people that wanted to screw over the biotech and healthcare industry. So at the same time, you're like, well, fuck them anyways, right? I don't know if they wanted to screw it over as much as, like, well, take advantage of when a biotech firm went on, like... Oh, okay. Went under. Yeah, but that means you're sitting at home going like, "Man, I hope that pill company that's giving people medicine for their AIDS goes uh, goes under." Well, the the the, so the, the, the like scam is shit. to bet on a new on like a, on like a new medication not being approved by the FDA. Right. Yeah. So you're not that... betting on like an AIDS medication that currently works being taken off the market. You're betting on someone being like, "Hi, I have a new I check out Rich's bottled elixir. This thing will solve everything from IBS to AIDS." And then when it doesn't. <laughs> Then they make money on the fact that it didn't. Okay, right. that's fair enough. Dude. Way to fucking fight. I for mean, those look, people. I'm not meaning to fight for investment bankers. I never thought I'd be on that side, <laughs> yeah, but I, I am a little bit in this moment. Yeah, yeah. So he didn't have 35 million dollars. He had 700, and I'm not saying 700 thousand. He had 700 dollars, and just over a year, he'd squandered almost all of that initial 700 thousand dollars in investment capital. I, I would see progress would be black guys who could get away with this. That's progress. That's to what me. I. That's progress to me. Like, black, black accounts, accounts matter. Black, black accounts, accounts matter. matter. <laughs> yeah, we don't. We're not in the black. There's we're no black in guys, the red. There's no black guys getting away with this. Just not in America, but like Uganda, I'm sure there is. Right? Oh, well, I mean, the, you mean the email scams? Yeah. But the, the Ugandan <laughs> stock market, where they bet on whether or not the the grocery store is stocked that weekend. Yeah. <laughs> trust me, there's scamming going on. Uh, well, you know. It's like, it's just Jewish people the and violent, white people doing it. Trust well, yeah, me. I, I would love for that to be the case, <laughs> but it is not. People, people screw each other all over the world. All I'm saying is, I would love for black guys in America that have $700, pretend like they have $35 million, and be able to spin a tail and have people give them money. Yeah. That'd be awesome. That's progress. Because guess what? He still raised $3 million from eight new hungry investors. Yep. Dang. From Hungary? No, yeah, he meant no. hungry like, like they, they were people hungry. who wanted to people right. wanted to win. Give me that money. Oh. Thirsty investors, maybe is a good way to put it. Oh, okay, they that thirst. Well, you know, he's from Albania. Maybe they're from Hungary. He could. I don't know. To make good on his promises, he couldn't simply wait around and hope that the companies tanked. So Martin and his partner took to their keyboards. The game plan. They made a song to place shorts on biotech companies, then savage them on the internet. Um, Are you Mark, serious? Like trying to do bad PR for them? Like, mm-hmm. like I'm gonna physically grassroots try to ruin this company to oh, fuck the, with their the, stocks. It's like that's possible with a couple like people. Those, those dudes who tried to band together to be like, we're gonna make sure uh, uh, Black Panther tanks on Rotten Tomatoes. You know, they kind of they made a bunch of Yelp reviews and savaged them. And right? look, I saw the box office results from this last weekend. They definitely succeeded. Black oh, Panther, they, they one of the it. biggest failures in movie history. Biggest failure. So congrats, Four Chan. You guys nailed it. <laughs> Martin and his team blasted companies on stock gossip websites, Twitter, and in person. He even engaged the CEO of a company he was shorting in a public shouting match at an investment conference. Could we have some people do the opposite for crime? Like a room of 20 people just like putting up on message boards like, you gotta check out this new episode of crime. It's fire. That's that's a great plan. Well, dude, can, can you guys uh, get some of those Silicon Valley data miner type people? Yeah. You know, like some of some... Indian dudes just sitting in a warehouse typing that crime is the best. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's called Fiverr. <laughs> <laughs> that's what... Oh, yes, I've been a huge fan. <laughs> I love it. He even wrote letters to the FDA urging them to reject products from companies he was targeting. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> Some of the stocks dropped over 30%. Oh, wow, it worked. Oh, yeah, it definitely worked. He made good money off of this chunk. Wow. But by February 2011, Martin was again teetering on the edge. He'd made another big bet, shorting millions of shares in one biotech stock. When the price failed to drop, 
he was left owing seven million dollars to Merrill Lynch. Damn! Might want to hold on to that one. No chance of paying. Even without this massive loss, MSMB was already in big trouble, having gone from one point one two million in assets to just fifty eight thousand dollars. Damn! And in New York, that's like a couch. MSMB stopped trading entirely. So this guy, uh, he went from millions, of, he went from nothing to living with his parents, back up again, mm-hmm. mm, right back down. And it sure does sound better than just like not making any money ever. So they have well, all, the whole company now has fifty eight thousand dollars. They owe seven million to Merrill Lynch. No the company deal. has stopped operations, but his investors had no idea because Martin continued to send out performance updates for a fund that, for all intents and purposes, Didn't even no exist. longer existed. Jeez. Hey, but do you know what? That's what college is for. They teach you to put together a bullshit report That's right. on anything. That's right. You, get a, you know you what, like what this show is? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Literally the only thing I learned in college you, is how to do this you show. Just get a, you just you get go. Photoshop and you put together a PDF and you press send, right? Yeah, just, just make a pie chart. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter if none of the things, if none of the slices are actual real slices. Oh, of course, right? Make a pie chart. It's everything's feeling. Fiat currency, including yeah. information. Now Martin practically lived in his office, sleeping on the floor and barely brushing his teeth. Oh, man. Yet to his Bad investors. Too, huh? <laughs> I, I owe $7 million, and I got a pretty stinky morning breath. I can't afford a mint, and that's my biggest problem now. <laughs> Yet to his investors, it appeared to be working on account of the fake 40% gains they received in their fake reports. He's like telling them in person, he's like, your funds are doing great. <laughs> They're like, whoo. Sir, uh, can you just email me the PDF next time, please? <laughs> Maybe smoke signals. Yeah. Uh, Martin, I really like what you're doing in the in the industry here, but uh, here's some Colgate stocks that are actually looking pretty good right now. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah we got this new gingivitis drug. We'd like you to- All of his clients are sending his gifts. Or, yeah, his gifts are hey, listed Martin, packs saw- for fucking Christmas. <laughs> Martin, I saw a new biotech company. They do full mouth transplants. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you thought about that. <laughs> It's so good guy. But a little thing like losing millions while defrauding investors would not keep Martin Fuckboy Scarelli down. It's not going to stop me. Martin that Scarelli. month, he yeah. opened another hedge fund, MSMB Healthcare. He was able to raise another $5 million from 13 new investors. This time, he took a different track. Instead of shorting and sabotaging biotech firms, he decided to found one of his own. Ooh, clever! He's like it's just on paper. That's like it's like when a sports agent becomes a general manager. They're just like, hey, I, I used to fuck these guys over. Now I'm gonna teach you how to not get fucked. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, it's like those, those those burglar guys that like started that show. Wasn't their show on Fox? Like where they showed you how to not get burglarized. And you're like, right. two former burglars. It's like they let you into the Fox building. Like yeah. what? Or like that oh, that OJ thing. Oh, how I would have no. did it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's got like bloody hands and a ski mask, and they're like, right this way, sir. Tell us how you would have done it. How can we catch these murderers? That's how Fox became FX. They just stole the yeah. O. <laughs> Is Martin Scarelli part of that? Retrofin's Retrofin's mission statement was to create treatments for rare diseases. Oh, so it's got a good cause at least. He's like crime for a good cause. I'm Martin Scarelli. I'm going to make some money, but I'm going to save save some people's lives. Publicly, Martin claims he started the company after being moved by the story of a young boy who had died from a rare form of muscular dystrophy. Oh, you got to have a story if you want to start your organization. That, and as he said in an interview with Vanity Fair, quote, "There wasn't enough money in hedge funds." That was especially not yours, especially motherfucker. Not yours, bitch. <laughs> he was just riffing, right? He was like, he was like being sarcastic, like. And the other thing is that it's not enough money in hedge funds. <laughs> no, he wanted to make it big, and in the interview, he pointed out that the Forbes top fifty is all company builders. So he'd for a long time had this known that like you can be an investment maker, you can make some money, but the real money is owning your own company, oh, is okay. building a company up. Oh, well, maybe we should start one. Crime vitamins. In late 2020. <laughs> Crimadins. 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 You got to get your vitamin hey, criminals, C. If you guys want. By the way, for someone, someone suggested us. It's uh-huh. great that Ed's here right now because one of our listeners suggested instead of calling everyone criminals, which I think is perfect, to call them criminals, which oh, is yeah. the name of a of a animated show that Ed and I wrote right. together. Yeah, years I ago. wonder at what right. point we're going to be like, hey, we take too much advice from our listeners. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I'm always hey. excited to ask them, like, and guys, pitch us your ideas. And now I'm like, criminals. All right, you're deleted. You're not allowed to give us any pitches. <laughs> hey, you guys should kill each other yeah. on the air. <laughs> yeah. You know what would be good? A fight to the death on your podcast. <laughs> People would listen. They would listen. They'd be like, why isn't this on YouTube, though? I'll fight to the nut. Oh, there's, there's, there's some, there's somebody listen. <laughs> there's somebody listen to all the gurgles and stuff. It's like, what the fuck are you listening to? Like, they're fighting to the dick. 
<laughs> Let's just fight to the nut, dude. I'll put a, a falafel on a table. We'll play awful waffle or falafel, and then we'll awful see. falafel. That's the Jewish version. I've never heard that before. And it's Sephardic, so great. It's the Sephardic version. <laughs> <laughs> There's awful, there's awful waffle too. Joe's falafel on Kuangana says, "You know what? We're changing our name, yeah. and it's a yeah. new business plan." I'm sponsoring you, boys. Uh, this what? is a very, very good podcast. Shout out Joe's falafel on Kuangana Boulevard. <laughs> Shout That's out, killer, killer food. Bro. Good That's shawarma, about a dollar fifty, too expensive for me, but good shawarma. In late 2012, <laughs> <laughs> it is. I'm like, I could go to Zanku with more. Oh, I'm just joking. I love your falafel. In late 2012, <laughs> Forbes profiled Martin as one of their 30 under 30 in finance. Noting that he had raised four million in the first round of funding, but quote, Scarelli said, (laughs) and the butt is reportedly said, (laughs) (laughs) that's it from here. (laughs) Back to you in the station. Fucking idiot. (laughs) On the subject of immaturity, (laughs) the butt was quoted as saying. Listen, the rest of my day I have to spend being a mature adult contributing to society. I can't but believe crime... we sell ads on this show. Oh, for... <laughs> so we, get, we should sell butt-related ads. <laughs> yeah. So ads for squatty potties? Dude, I made my own. That's great. You made your own? I built my own out of wood. All you have to do Probably is... Probably not the, the, <laughs> the material you want. It's You're all your food. <laughs> well, wood's oddly absorbent. I mean... <laughs> I didn't <laughs> seal it. You can okay. wipe it off. Get back to your story, you freak. <laughs> Making okay. your own squatty. But I made my own toilet out of these old buckets. <laughs> <laughs> so Forbes put on the 30 for 30 list, and they noted that he raised $4 million in the first round of funding. But, quote, <sighs> Scarelli says he can't disclose how much, com- how much the company has in the bank, but says the company is largely funded on an as-it-goes basis. <laughs> It's like MacGruber's style. Uh, I'm trying to make it up as I go. Dude, this motherfucker has one of those, uh, what's that shit? Uh, those those cards that only work if you have enough cash on them to work. Oh, prepaid. He's got yeah, a prepaid, prepaid company. Yeah. This motherfucker's got a prepaid company. He took Retrofin Public in 2013, raising an, an initial $9 million in the IPO, followed wow. by over $100 million from private investors. Jesus. So he literally just went back and forth, like skyrocketed to money, mm-hmm. went back down to living mm-hmm. at home, skyrocketed to money, went back down. Into huge debt, and then now is in the hundreds of millions well, now. Well, okay, but and this is what they got. I must say, this to me is proof of further white mediocrity because I guarantee it wasn't a bunch of Negroes with millions of disposable dollars giving them money to, to make this goofy ass biotech company. It was a bunch of people who have a bunch of money and no fucking sense. How sure. did a bunch of people with a bunch of money? How could, how could you have no sense to get that much money? Be be grandfathered into having but, all that much money. But Ed, some Ed, kind of everyone's way. susceptible to just being conned into something by, by a really good uh, elixir salesman. Hey, guess yeah, what? you guess bought what? that shirt. Bam! Bam! Uh, number culture. one. That shirt's not even purple. Wait, whose side am I on? I that got shirt's this great. Shirt. It's not purple. I love I it. I got this shirt after doing a show, and a guy said, hey, hey, I, I got this Sasquatch shirt. I never wore it or nothing. And I put it on, and immediately the musk of him was on it. And I was like, Jesus Christ, he wore the shirt. He, he wore the shirt. Right he lied to you. Well, he's a salesperson, oh Ed, so you yeah. were conned in. I know. I was just well, like okay, all those on people. That, on that you level. got conned into having his DNA in your nose, dude. <laughs> well, hey, okay, fine. Speaking, I, of, speaking of DNA in his nose, it kind of looks like he spilled like baby powder or cocaine on a blue shirt. All right, go on with your story. And it made it such. Anyway. In reality, in the shape of a, of a this was the next step. Sasquatch, a Sasquatch cocaine blow. A true. Oh my god, it's a Sasquatch on my shirt. All right, go on. In reality, story. this was the next step in Martin's elaborate shell game. Martin, the four million in funding. Damn, Dina was actually yeah, nobody flown. who talks like that got conned in this bullshit. <laughs> I can't fucking tell you. Well, Ed, isn't that the, fu- <laughs> the future you've been just talking about? That's what you want black people to be like, yeah, man, I just I w- invested all my money. I want us to run the scam, not get scammed. You want, you're, it's like, my dream is that one, one day black people get Enron. That's what I'm going right, for. Right, exactly. The big Ed, short just be about some bunch of black that's people. That's just different color skin doing the same shitty shit to our planet. That's not progress. Uh, the $4 million in funding. I want better for these kids. That's your opinion. Was actually funneled from his latest hedge <laughs> Fund. This is a, this is actually critical. Oh, sorry. Uh, start from the very beginning this is of the very story. Important. Start Martin over. Fuckboy Scarelli was born in Brooklyn, New York, <laughs> and he's a giant cunt. Uh, okay. Woo. The four million dollars in funding for Retrofin was actually funneled from his last hedge fund. Next came a flurry of faked, backdated paperwork to make it appear like there was money everywhere. Nah. He changed part of his initial illegal investment into a loan then forced the company to repay it so he could move cash back to MSMB to pay off a $1.3 million court settlement with Merrill Lynch. 
So he made up money out of thin air by having multiple companies be like, well, now we're paying it back. Mm -hmm. Like that episode of Beavis and Butthead where they sold one candy bar back and forth to each other for a dollar. It's the exact same sort of thing. The big thing he did in this first step was that he took the the initial investment into the healthcare company, their interretrofin. Mm -hmm. He went back in time in the paperwork and adjusted it so instead of being an investment, it was a loan. Wow. And then he made the he made Marty, his, his we've got his, to his go back. <laughs> <laughs> it worked. They would call him Marty. I bet someone calls him Marty. Doc, in the picture, all my money's disappearing. <laughs> you know that new uh, scam you've been looking for? I think I got it right here. <laughs> Is that what he said? I think I got it right here? Something. Listen, listen to this. Well, Something like that. His, his next biotech scheme would be like, uh, uh, a drug that makes your asshole integrity come back <laughs> together after you spend a bunch of time in prison. Anyway, I'm sorry. To throw off the wow. SEC. Ed, that's brutal. <laughs> Edward, that's the brutal award of the day from crime, Edward. That's very intense what you just said happened to that man in prison. <laughs> to throw wow. off the Securities Exchange Commission, Martin faked millions in investments by MSMB into Retrofin. So now he's to, to cover up all the losses of the money that he's not paying back from the, the hedge fund. Mm-hmm. He's faking that the hedge fund invested into his new company. Mm-hmm. Wow. Finally, he offered his investors who believed that he had doubled their money a choice between cash or stock in Retrofin. <laughs> of course, all of them went for stock, right? Some wanted the cash. Oh, never mind. So Martin and his attorney, Evan Griebel, first tried to solve the problem by paying them off with settlements against the company. Complaints and grievances. <laughs> <laughs> the, hey, it grebles, it wobbles, but it doesn't fall down. <laughs> but when an auditor began to notice something shady, they switched to raising the money by creating fake invoices for consulting work, siphoning away another $7 million. So so Martin's real talent here is that he's a great elixir salesman, and he's really good. It's like Nathan for you. He's really good at, like, I got to put up a front, so we need the paperwork and all the numbers and graphics to make it look like the stuff's going on. Someone else so described the- this to me as that his crime is that what made him a great criminal is that he's really good at Excel spreadsheets. Yeah, well, that's what right. I'm saying, basically. Right. That's a really concise way. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Well, he's like the, the, the Dimitri Martin of modern <laughs> financial yeah. crime. Uh, except for what he's drawing. Look at these, he's visual, pie charts. Yeah, look at these visual aids. I'm killing it. Uh-huh. Well, here's the thing my sister was telling me uh, is that part of why this wor- this last part, the consulting work thing, worked out so well is because creating kind of shady consulting contracts is a legal an important way of avoiding taxes. So say you have a company that ha- like a company that's in a high tax state, but there's another company like a shell company or smaller division that's in another state with lower taxes. You funnel it through there. What you'll do, what, and this is legal to do, you have the the, the, sm- the company in the other state consult with the larger company so that some of that money gets shifted over to be taxed there instead of taxed in the higher tax state. And that's why Apple doesn't and pay taxes. And you can get fired. Like she was telling me, you can get fired from a job for not doing for that. not doing that. Because you're oh. not saving the company enough money. Mm. Oh, yeah. What a great So royalty. what he did was definitely illegal, but he it was only legal because everything was fake to pay off debts or whatever. But the process was but totally the, like a, a... But the process is one that would look legal potentially to some people. Yeah. Still, despite all this money that didn't exist going everywhere, Retrofin performed well, mostly because the company began to shift away from the mission statement because as it turns out, developing new drugs is expensive. <laughs> so Retrofin switched tactics, buying old and out-of-use drugs and repurposing them for new applications. They bought a drug used for treating gallstones and turned it into a treatment for a rare but deadly brain disease. What do you mean? They actually like made it work on something else? Like they, they actually a lot did of drugs. Some, a lot they of did drugs, some good in the like, world. Viagra was meant as a heart medication. I remember. Yeah, I read about a, it. a lot of stuff like that gets yeah. kind of yeah, repurposed. And Rogaine was meant as like a, a lip balm. Something was uh, it really? Yeah, and a bunch the, of bitches had furry lips. So it was like, oh shit, this is uh, fucked up. Uh, yeah, uh, this is starting to work. <laughs> they bought a drug developed in the 1960s to help mothers with lactation. <laughs> now, now using it on a rare but deadly kidney disease. It was just Martin going around house to house, just rubbing nipples. While this might sound great, he also took an important step that would eventually make him famous as the pharma bro. He started making viral blog videos. He raised the prices. Oh, I remember when that happened. That was only a couple years ago. Yeah, so this is the init- this is the first time he ever does it. He buys these old drugs that aren't really used for much, repurposes them, but then raises the prices because they're being repurposed. Didn't he, re- didn't he raise the price? Oh, we're getting there. Don't you worry. Yeah. We're going to see some... Th- th- this guy is America's douchebag number one. Jeez. We're going to cover some ground. He's not misunderstood? Like he no, just no, no. He's a, he's, a no he's, he's a giant pile of cunts. I mean, you said he made a brain tumor drug, so I was like, that's pretty cool, right? In the spring of 2014, the company's stock soared from around $3 a share to over 20 
2020. Soaring up, up, and away! On May 29th, he tweeted, quote, This is one of the best days of my life. He's tweeting? How the fuck does he have time to tweet? The next day, he sold $4.5 million of his stock. Oh, hell yeah. Get myself some sushi! When people began to question Martin and his company, they found themselves attacked by a collection of Twitter accounts with names like at Thug Bioanalyst, at Legit Biotech, and at Cletus Burritus. These are all fake names. Run by young Retrofin employees, they all posted things like, quote, Retrofin, this bad boy gonna rip higher, and them sucker ass fools gonna still be crying. So that's a great line. I, uh, I love co-opting the urban patois to talk about this nerdy g- g- shit. That's well, exactly fantastic. what they all did. Well, I, I love it. Is, is it. So these people work for him, mm-hmm. and they know he's doing shady stuff. And, and they're, they're on board, They're bro. on board. They're gla- so he's finding people that are like-minded, like, let's, let's fuck the world over together. Kill it in the name of... The same month, he pulled the first edition of the move that would eventually make him famous. As CEO of Retrofin, he purchased a drug called Theola, which is the only drug in the world that provides treatment for a rare disease causing the body to form stones in the kidney, uterer, and bladder. Jesus. The disease has no cure. Patients have to take eight pills of Theola a day to fight the effects. Eicht. When Retrofin bought the drug, it cost $1.50 a pill. He raised the price to $30. That's fucked up. Wow. And, and are the people paying that or are the insurance companies paying it? Well, part of his excuse he would later come up with was like, well, the insurance companies and buyouts and special deals and discounts and all this stuff. But either way, they're going to pass that fucking that, on to the That's people. getting passed on to somebody. They're going to pass that on, yeah. At the same time, Martin's behavior was getting worse. When he wasn't in his office, which held an arsenal of Nerf guns. That sounds like a cool office. He wandered into meetings wearing bunny slippers and a stethoscope. Still sounds pretty cool. He further upset the board when he tweeted from a biotech conference in San Diego asking, quote, bio babes to stop by the company booth. I don't agree with that. Not in today's climate. (laughs) I, bio babes. Bio just, babes. A, just a bunch of chicks coming over with that magically take their glasses off or take their hair down and they're just all tins. Yeah. Right? Just, just fucking, she's all that, bitches. They, they just coming lab, out of nowhere. Just lab coats and glasses. Hello. Doesn't bio bio chicks or bio, bio, oh, bio, bio section? Yeah. Bio babes. Bi- doesn't, yeah. doesn't bio babes sound like after like where there's like robot like chicks out there and like you're just like, man, I'm tired of dating all these robot chicks. Like yeah. I got some I need bio some babes. Bio babes. Yeah, yeah, My arm never gets tired. That yeah, that's great, but I, I have no gag reflex. I that's Wonderful. I still want to fuck you, but I want to bomb Here's with my some bio extra babes. hole. I have four extra holes perfectly designed for you. I don't know about a honeycomb kind of girl. I'm just looking for, you know, a Have woman you I... ever tried the side hole? You know, maybe I, I'll call the bio babes tomorrow. I can <laughs> remove my eye. Come on over. I am threesome bot 5000. I have been dispatched. Your displeasure <laughs> has been registered on the, <laughs> the grand computer. Come hop on this hedgecock, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Martin also began harassing the family of a former colleague who left the company after a business deal went south. He wrote a seven-paragraph letter to the man's wife, quote, I hope to see you and your four children homeless and will do whatever I can to assure this. Then he contacted the son of the man on instant messenger, accusing his father of stealing $3 million. Oh my God. This guy's like a petty. Well, this is what happens when you have a 20 year old that get, gets $100 million. They act like assholes. Then he somehow he, broke into the man's Facebook, Gmail, LinkedIn, and Twitter accounts, oh changed the passwords, and posted embarrassing messages. Well, the LinkedIn, that was the last straw. I mean, everybody's had their Facebook hack, but LinkedIn? You verified one of my friends as being good at Excel? Yeah. How dare you? I would never say that he was good at that. You had Postmates deliver a flashlight to my new job. I mean, that's a that's a nice... By the way, if anyone wants to... If anyone wants to deliver anything to us here at Crime, Fleshlights included, you can send them to Crime uh, Care of the Comedy Store, 8433-SUNSET. For a second, so I thought you, you were going to uh, give them an email address. No, no, no. Like, no yeah, you can email me a Fleshlight. That's... You can do. you and I'll 3D print my own fleshlight? That doesn't sound like it would feel just, real good on the glands. Just getting a bunch of cocktromonts. <laughs> cocktromonts. <laughs> fucking sent over here to the comedy store. When what police kind of show is this? <laughs> when police contacted Martin about their harassment, he first denied even knowing the man, then said he hadn't talked to him in over a year. Quote, so how could I be harassing him? Oh, God. In court, the opposing I attorney... I don't even have a computer, Your Honor. <laughs> I live with my parents. In court, the opposing You're killing attorney... killing me, Larry! ...asked to have Martin's computers examined for evidence of hacking and harassment, and he quickly settled. Oh, yeah, he's like, don't even go on there. Child porn! There's- By September, the board had enough. They fired Martin as CEO over a combination of his antics and 
upcoming concerns over irregularities in their stock. Wait, he got fired for having... For being a dick and because their their auditors are starting to be like, hey, some of these finances seem a little weird. But it's... He had you his own company, fired, You though. can get fired from your own company. Once you have a board and go public and do all that shit. It's like the well, plot of watch many TV shows later. and movies. <laughs> yeah, the plot of the Dark Knight. There's a reason we're not incorporating, bro. There's a reason. <laughs> so that like a board doesn't fire so one of I us? So I can stay in the fucking dictatorial position that I'm in. Wait, aren't we both dictators? Aren't we a shared dictatorship? Like, you're the husband, I'm the wife? This like is the king trick of being a good defecator. Defecator? Defecator. Slayton is a great defecator. I gotta tell you, after these shows sometimes, he's got a perch. <laughs> But he would not be stopped. Within days, Martin opened offices for his new company, Turing Pharmaceuticals, named after Alan Turing, the British mathematician who cracked the Nazi Enigma machine codes. Yeah. The imitation game guy. And was then persecuted for being gay. Mm Mm-hmm. Martin bought an Enigma machine for his office. The guy helped stop World War II, and they're like, but he was gay. They're like, yeah, the guy saved a lot of lives, man. Can you just get over it? Yeah, but two dicks stuff? shouldn't touch, yeah, man. Yeah, man, don't make the snakes kiss. That's against biblical law. Martin bought an knitting machine for his office, then told a reporter, quote, I'm conflicted because it's a Nazi relic. It's like owning a gas chamber. Like, what the fuck? But it's a constant <laughs> reminder that we should use knowledge for good, even if the process is ugly. Oh, he is a modern. Oh, man. he was with Greebles. Now he's with Goebbels. Yeah. What the fuck is happening? <laughs> wow, that's good that you caught that. <laughs> dude, high level Holocaust riff. Oh, dude, high Hitler. Yeah. With two Holocaust Jews, riff, they right have there. a good Holocaust riff. I, th- I think yeah. that's like dunking yeah. on some dudes from Compton. You know, <laughs> yeah, I love it. That's like oh, if I oh, bust, you dunk. That's like if, if I jump with on us. at jazz night and something like I'm killing the sax and everyone's like, whoa, <laughs> Rob Burgundy over. Here. All right, yeah. man. Ron Purple. Anyway, go. <laughs> Before long, the world would get a front row seat to just how ugly the process could get. By August of 2015, he raised $90 million from investors, which he used to buy the rights to a 62-year-old drug called Daraprim. He used, used to treat the parasitic infection toxoplasmosis. Daraprim is a life-saving medication for people with compromised immune systems, they like babies, cats. cancer, and age patients, Yep, with no generic alternative. Why? When, how is there not a generic alternative in the, the whole time, planet? At the time, there was the whole planet. At the time, there wasn't. How can they? How is that? Lo- well, how because, the United Nations suppo- not make it just like legal? Supposedly, there's an amount of time that you can have total autonomy on having that drug, and generics can't be produced, and then that that will elapse, and then people can flood the market with a generic version of it. But there's a limited amount of time. But this drug was from the '60s. So well, it's like, give it five years. Everyone, to make strap in, guys. I'm strapping in. I'm strapping strap on. It. When Turing <laughs> obtained the <laughs> drug, oh, 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 stop strapping on. Now, nah, Martin, you're gonna get it. <laughs> When Turing obtained the drug, the price went from thirteen fifty to seven hundred fifty dollars. Fucking assholes! Wow. wow, he really is a douchey. To bad. celebrate his new venture, Martin bought a rare piece of music memorabilia: <laughs> Michael Jackson's penis, Kurt Cobain's signed Visa card. This guy is a fan of fucking Nirvana, which he Fuck kept that. in his wallet. You stay away from Nirvana. To bring out whenever it was time to pay a bill. So he'd be at a restaurant or a bar, and he'd be like, oh, I got it, and then drop Kurt Cobain's credit card. But no one notices the names on your credit card. Well, of course, he waits for the guy to, for the guy to be like, oh, sorry, this didn't work. He goes, oh, I'm sorry, because that's it's because it's Kurt Cobain's. That's my bad. My bad. Let me bring my real credit card now. Oh, by the way, I have Kurt Cobain's credit card. It's signed. <laughs> I am so pissed that that guy thinks he's a Nirvana fan. You get the fuck away from me, Kurt, Chris, Dave. I'm not going to say the name of the song, Nirvana but I think songs. we all know what Martin Scarelli's favorite Nirvana song is. Not going to say it. Penny Royal I'll let you guys guess it. Well, this was not the first time a company had pulled this move. I'm going to say come as you are, right? It quickly became the most famous. By September... Aneurysm? By September, That's Martin Scarelli's name became synonymous with corporate greed. heart shape box. He made the rounds of talk shows, trying to argue that what he was doing was totally cool. Lithium? And wouldn't deprive lithium. anyone access to the drug. Is it lithium? But no one bought it. He became such a big story that the Washington Post ran an article written by a girl who went out with him on a Tinder date. (laughs) That month, he was the talk of the presidential primaries, criticized by Clinton, Trump, and Bernie Sanders. Martin tried to donate $2,700 to Bernie's campaign, but the candidate refused the money and donated it to an AIDS charity. Good for you, Bernie. Should have been our president. Look what we got now. Martin tweeted in all caps, quote, So angry at Bernie Sanders, I could punch a wall. Followed by 24 exclamation points and one number one, because he slipped when he was doing the exclamation points. <laughs> oh, I hate that. And yep. then still press send, though? 
And then still press send. Like, honestly, that says more about your state of mind than 27 exclamation points. Just the, that slip. The slip. Yep. How are yeah. these dudes that rich? All these rich people that fuck up on Twitter. I'm like, can't you have an editor? Can't you have a Twitter editor? Well, I mean, why don't you take two fucking seconds to proofread this thought you're putting out to the entire world? The, At the yeah, same rich. Just time. Just have an editor. Martin came under fire from his old company. Retrofin filed a $65 million lawsuit against their former CEO. Like a personal lawsuit? Asserting that he founded the company purely to raise money through the IPO to pay off the significant debts from his failed previous hedge funds. Are they, do they know, they have to have known that he was a shady dude when they worked with him, but now they're like, being like well, we his, didn't repu- know. his reputation was as a mad genius all across the board. Okay. Like everyone has thought he's a crazy person who's brilliant. And, okay. and also, the part of his brilliance was being shady. Mm-hmm. There's legal shady that you kind of have to do to compete. Yeah. And it, 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 it looks very much like Illegal I'm shady. fucking everybody mm-hmm. over shady. And they're, they're very close. There's a thin line between legal shady and fuck you shady. And how much can we charge for that thin line? Martin yeah, called. Exactly. Right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to invest in that thin line yeah. failing. Everyone's using thin lines. We should basically get it and then charge for access. Martin called the allegations false, claiming the company was only filing a lawsuit because they were trying to avoid paying him his severance package. Then he tweeted, quote, I am not the one to fuck with. Hashtag Wu-Tang. Uh, oh, yeah. That guy seems like Wu-Tang here would we love go. him. Here we go. This is okay. I think okay. ODB's on half of the drugs that you fucking <laughs> just raised the price on. And In October, someone did fuck with him. A small company announced that they were releasing a $1 version of Daraprim. Good for you guys. Drastically undercutting his business. Fuck yeah. Since the drug was so old, there was no way to stop them. Good for them. So in November 2015, Martin made two major purchases. First... His newest fund bought Calo Bios, a small, failing pharmaceutical company that happened to have the U.S. rights to a drug treating another rare parasitic infection. When the news broke, Calo Bios stock soared 400%. At the end of the month, he announced his second purchase. For $2 million, he was the owner of the world's only copy of Once Upon a Time in Shaolin, the newest and perhaps last album by the Wu-Tang Clan. I kind of remember that. Yeah. yeah. That, like, no one had heard, so he could drive around bla- blasting it, and people were like, what's that? Oh, that's a little Wu-Tang. He and the RZA had lunch, but shockingly didn't hit it off. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think the RZA would have said? Like, why are you wearing those, uh, those bunny shoes? <laughs> why are you, you overcharging for those drugs? Why are you overcharging for those drugs? They used to cost thirteen dollars. Now they cost seven hundred fifty dollars. That's exactly how RZA talks. That's a beautiful RZA impression. Oh, RZA's, great. RZA's Josh amazing. Martin. Yeah, dude, I'm telling you, it's like hey, uh, thirty five million. Yeah, that's how he talks. That's so fucking dude, funny. That's how the fuck RZA talks. RZA Perfect. baby talks, bro. That's hey. why he makes the beats. I get it. Yeah, there you go. Officially, the most hated man in the country, Martin now spent his time in his apartment streaming on YouTube, sometimes for ten hours at a time, as he defended his business, played video games, tweeted, and took random phone calls. Sometimes he gave lectures on the basics of market analysis and chemistry. Other times he teased viewers about the possibility of playing the Wu-Tang album, claiming, quote, I'm trying to dominate the rap industry. This guy has way too much money and free time. During one stream, he got into it with a kid from his old high school. Quote, I'm going to be at the courtyard tomorrow and I'm going to beat the shit out of you. You can tell the principal who, by the way, I have drinks with, so he's not going to do shit. This is the most juvenile shit I've ever heard in my life. Yeah. Principals uh, don't drink. <laughs> I'm going to fuck you up at, where the principal, at your high what, school. Why are we talking about the fucking principal? Well, because he's still at... This guy is stuck at 14. Yeah. As many CEOs probably are. Then on December 17th, 2015, he and Evan Griebel were arrested by the FBI on charges of securities fraud. Oh, Griebel fucking standing a little too close to the fire. As yeah. the news ricocheted around the internet, some people... people well, I'm just, I was just going to go say, so, some people think uh, Griebel shot first. That's, uh, that's all I'm saying. Go ahead. That is a Star Wars <laughs> slash pharmaceutical industry riff. <laughs> Brought to you by Crime! <laughs> and Will Butrin. And Will Butrin. As the news ricocheted around the internet, people raised questions about every aspect of the case. Leading to this tweet... From the account of the FBI's New York office, quote, hashtag breaking, no seizure (laughs) warrant at the arrest of Martin Scarelli today, which means we didn't seize the Wu-Tang Clan album. (laughs) Wu-Tang had not been that relevant for fucking years. Oh, we live in idiocracy, though. That was the the news. Everyone's like, this guy's like an awful criminal. People are probably dying. because You know it's 2015 when the FBI is tweeting about Wu-Tang. Yeah. (laughs) 
Before I shaved my head like a 1960s asshole, I was a huge fan of those black fellers. <laughs> the next day, Martin made fellers. his five million dollar bail, stepping down as the CEO of Turing, and watched as the shares of Calo Bios fell by more than half. Then he jumped on YouTube for a five hour live stream for 800 people. I think I hate him more for this shit. He appeared totally relaxed in pajamas and a purple t-shirt. You said, are you fucking serious? Fuck you, Martin. Fuck you and the horse you rode in on. Get the fuck out of here with your fucking purple shirts. That's the fucking last straw. It's the best thing I've heard. The only good thing about him this that, entire you think story. That's a redeeming quality? It's I the best quality he has. But th- I think that I think I'm seeing a pattern. What Screlly does is he'll like something cool people like in an attempt to almost lamprey like leech mm-hmm. their coolness yep. out of them. He likes Nirvana. He likes Wu Tang. That's that's both the '90s way of going for music. Sure. You're a Nirvana head or Wu Tang head in the '90s. Yeah. That's it. So he's he, yeah. I see a pattern. The next day, Martin made. Oh yeah, he stepped down. He updated his Twitter to remove the title of CEO. He played a few games of chess and lost. He went through his OK Cupid matches, then expressed interest in dating Lindsay Lohan. But he told his viewers, quote, I have a lot of cavities. My teeth are terrible. So that's going to turn Lindsay off and be like, yeah, but I also have a bunch of pills, Lindsay. She'd be like, I'll be there in five fucking minutes. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> hey, uh, right? <laughs> hey, Lindsay, uh, I don't know if you want to come hang out. I have that new Wu-Tang album. Yeah, I don't really like um, black music. I have lots of money. Um, yeah, I, I got money too. Uh, <laughs> I let's see. I own a pharmaceutical company. Yeah. I have multiple cars. I You're have, so um, hot! Oh my god, stop talking! I want to fuck you right now. Wow! If I'd known that was the way, I would have. I would have opened with drugs. Oh, you should always open with drugs. Uh, three days later, Martin was fired from Calo Bios. The third time he's fired as a CEO. By I the way, he was already fired, and he changed the CEO thing. He was but... fired from Turing, but uh, not, now he's fired from Calo Bios. A week later, the company filed for bankruptcy. In January, it was revealed that he was able to make bail because he had forty-five million dollars in an E-Trade account. Fuck! This guy's an asshole. There is no justice. One month later, <laughs> the value of that account dropped by over forty million. Oh. That's but losing so tens of millions of dollars was not the most important thing to Martin Scarelli at that moment. It was the love of Lindsay Lohan and her freckles. Instead, which... he was focused on his first rap beef with Ghostface Killa uh-huh. of the Wu-Tang Clan. He's got a beef with the Wu-Tang? This is just getting worse. It started when TMZ ran a short clip of Ghostface telling paparazzi that Martin was a shithead for raising the price of AIDS medications. Yeah. Martin responded by releasing a video where he, drinking wine, while flanked by three men in masks and hoodies, referred to the rapper as Dennis, threatened to erase his verses from the secret Wu-Tang album. Oh my god, that actually is pretty fucking hilariously crazy. (laughs) Demanded a written apology and said, quote, don't ever mention my name again or there'll be more of a price to pay than just this video. The masked men behind him. Wu-Tang, like the most ghetto-ass fucking, like they made like $50 million and they they, they bought the Honda Civics. Well, just this, this, this I, pharmaceutical ISIS he's trying to set up. <laughs> yeah. you know what, what the, what do you think you're doing? He's just out of, he's off his rocker. Again, he's a 14-year-old fucking idiot. The masked man, the masked men behind him chimed in with occasional motherfuckers and N-bombs. <laughs> wow. What? From Martin's side? They, they had yeah. N-bombs? They, they were all, wow. I think they were all black dudes. Well, I, it's, it's, that doesn't matter though, if it's see, on behalf of Martin. So, it, I, mean, I mean, look, any, any N-bomb on behalf of Martin that's not angrily directed at him is, in, is, a, yeah. is a problem. Yeah, that's a... Uh, well, that's that's a sad thing. You, when you have enough money, you can buy a black gang to back <laughs> you up. A black gang slash backup well, singers. you should be happy, Ed. See, they're getting involved in <laughs> that's corporate not fraud progress. That's awful. still... That's still Here's my help. new hedge fund. Uh, it's called the 21st Street Crips. Yeah, and... exactly. That's the type of shit I'm talking about. Get with Rich. Ghostface responded with a 12-minute video of his own calling Pee Wee Shkreli a fake ass supervillain and describing the beef as Ghost versus Peter Pan. Oh, that's I'm sure his video is way more eloquent. Well, now that's better. surprisingly incisive. Yeah. Uh, Ghost versus Peter Pan because yeah. he refuses to grow up and he's fighting people at courtyards yeah. and shit. Yeah, dude. That's surprisingly incisive. Well, See, that's course. an artist. Of course. That's an artist. Yeah, fucking, of course Wu Tang's going to have a better fucking. Uh, <laughs> well, you think, yeah. He called Martin better a, company. quote, soft killer for jacking up the prices of medication, Damn. then brought out three goons of his own. Women who couldn't afford their medications to tell their stories. Oh, oh wow. Shit. Okay. You're fucked up there, buddy. Hashtags. The, the, oh, fuck. <laughs> all, the hashtags. all the hashtags, Martin. They're gonna, you're just, all those pointy hashtags are like, swastika is still developing. They're going to cut you up, boy. The video closed with ads for Ghostface's new product, Woo Goo CBD Oil, 
a Wu Tang themed cannabis based remedy supposedly for cancer, seizures, depression, and high blood sugar. Is that still available? I don't know, but I want some Wugu, dude. I, want, yeah. I don't know. They have a lot of things that used to be called Wugu uh, <laughs> back in the day. Uh, well, a Wugu beef? That's really very uh, expensive. <laughs> you, yeah, I'm not talking about the Wugu beef. I'm talking about uh, you spend enough time with the RZA, the Jizza. Well, well, the, especially I, the Jizza. The you spend a lot of time with the Jizza. Especially the Jizza. <laughs> you spend time with the Jizza, you're getting some Wugu. You're getting some Wugu. Uh, you're getting well, some you know. Wugu. Oh, they call oh, from the 36 <laughs> Chambers. Look up. Look they, up. They call <laughs> him the Jism. That's <laughs> Despite losing $40 cream. million. Dollars, cream. <laughs> dollar, dollar bills, y'all. Woo goo. Yeah, this is I'll, fucking, I'll fucking get dehydrated on you <laughs> by dropping on my woo goo. <laughs> Despite losing $40 million and beefing with Ghost, <laughs> Martin still had enough money to hire Benjamin Braffman, a high profile attorney known for representing clients like Sean P. Diddy Combs, NFL star Plaxico Barres. Michael uh, Michael Jackson and Rabbi Menachem Yulus, who called himself he get put in this the one? Jewish Indiana Jones, who what was found fuck? guilty of fraud for selling fake Holocaust Taurus. What? what? Wait, wait, how do you sell a fake Holocaust Taurus? You just take him to a barn that's really fucked up and go, Jews died in here. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, no, no. <laughs> he, so he would say he like went to some to some small community in Germany or to a concentration camp and dug through some ashes and then like dodged some bullets and a big rolling lo- rock and then he came back with a Torah that had been lost during the Holocaust. <laughs> Did you say Torah or Tour? Torah. Oh, okay. Man, the, the, you gotta, oh, scroll, the, so he excavated it. He, he I claimed, thought you said tours as well. So this, this, dude, Torah. Cl- this dude would come back and claim, like, hey, I have this Torah from the Holocaust. Would you like to, would you like to buy it for your synagogue? And they'd pay way more than it was worth because it was a fake Holocaust He's like ripping Torah. off other synagogues? Yeah. That's one for us. Temple Beth Shalom's up, up and up. But he also, but this, this, this lawyer, Braffin, represented um, P. Diddy when he had his, like, his weapons and, um, and, uh, and other the, like, the shine charges. The shine yep. situation. He represented Plasco Burris when he shot himself in the leg in that nightclub. Yep. And he represented Michael Jackson on his second molestation How charge. How you get in trouble for shooting yourself in the foot? You're like, yeah, nobody got hurt. Well, I'm, I'm already I mean, I did, kind of. Yeah. I'm going to I'm I'm sue me then. Dude, I'm sorry. You can't have a gat and sweatpants. That's it's good, literally that's not. <laughs> they just fall. They have a, dra- a good drawstring. Like they just fall down with a yeah, gat in the, in the pocket. Just, no oh, no, way. it is absolutely irresponsible. I definitely <laughs> agree. But I'm saying he's been punished. I'd be like, Your Honor, he's obviously been punished for what he did already. Braffman's first instruction to his new client was, quote, stop talking. Oh, yeah. And he won't. Martin obeyed mostly. On February 4th, he appeared before Congress on a subpoena about rising drug prices. He answered every question by invoking his Fifth Amendment rights against self-incrimination. So he didn't say anything. He just said, "My, my I plead the fifth. Yeah, and when he wasn't saying nothing, he mugged for the camera. Less than an hour after the hearings, he posted on Twitter, quote, hard to accept that these imbeciles represent the people in our government. That was the end of his silence. A few days later, he went on Power 106, The Breakfast Club, (laughs) one of America's top hip-hop radio shows. They let him on? To address the label given to him by Charlemagne the God as Donkey of the Day, which is um, his, like, daily thing where he goes, you're the biggest fuck-up of the day. Yeah. He explained his video by saying Ghost shot first and, quote, in the hip-hop game, as we all know, it's not easy to be on the receiving end of those things without jumping back. He said, as we all know. The host responded uh, by pointing the out that he's... pharmaceutical yeah, community. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the host pointed out that he I is really very much not in the hip-hop game. I a strong bond between Martin Scarelli and all the black people and fans of hip-hop. It's just, it's, it's right there. It's right in front it's of right him. It's right there. He's like, look, I'm just a regular New York guy with $100 million like the rest yeah, of you. I, I, I like I'm a just a beat. regular 22-year-old guy, yeah. a guy who had access to $100 million at 22, just like all these brothers in the streets. I'm just part of that crew, you know what I'm saying? High five, fist bump, right, my brothers? <laughs> Frustrated after they told him he was not in the hip-hop game, he replied, quote, if you want to talk shit, I'm not the one. If he were here wow. right now, I'd smack him right in the face. I bring in, bring in an NWA quote, huh? I ain't the one. I ain't the one. That's right. In June of 2016. With a pill and a gun. <laughs> <laughs> in June of 2016, the judge, uh, no, in June of 2016, Martin finally appeared in federal court, pleading not guilty to the indictments. Braffman argued they couldn't set a date for the trial as the defense needed to review over 3 million documents. Wow. Jesus Christ. The judge agreed. That afternoon, Martin live-streamed his walk home, 
stopping at Dunkin' Donuts to brag to customers that, quote, the judge bit slapped the government again. At Dunkin' Donuts? Will someone just put a bullet in the back of this guy's fucking head? He's live streaming and going to Dunkin' Donuts. There's no point anymore. Before telling his viewers, quote, 90% of you are watching this are morons. <laughs> Maybe not 90%, 50%. Okay, so then that means uh, statistically I'm probably not who he's referring to. Okay, I'll keep watching. In July 2016, the judge finally set a trial date for June of the following year. A month later, the company that went belly up after Martin's arrest emerged from bankruptcy, and he sold his, sold his shares in Calo Bios for $5.9 million. Wow. Much of that money went immediately into founding a new software company with a former Twitter senior engineer as the chief technology officer. Emboldened by his financial and legal windfalls, Martin got back to business as usual. On August 6th, he announced the production of his debut rap album. <sighs> what? Despite track names like Cease and Desist, Body Bags, <laughs> and What That Mouth Do... This guy had the nerve. <laughs> Can we hear it? It can't be good. Martin promised it was no joke. Quote, my album isn't a pharma parody or no bullshit. It's anthem after anthem I put down for the streets because I am a serial beat killer. What, dude? So, can I just say this? We haven't mentioned yes. the whole time. Yes, and I don't yes, know if yes, it's yes, logged yes. in, but this guy's clearly a cocaine addict. I, I, alleged, I, alleged. Because I just want to point out that all of these crimes, unless except for the ones that are verified by a court of law, are alleged no, crimes. I'm not even saying the crimes. I mean, I'm these, saying the these crimes are against hip -hop. these are certifiable coke boasts. I'll back right? you up on that one. <laughs> this is the, these, these are coke boasts. These are the voice of a, of a or what do you call? What's the other one uh, with the A starts with the A uh, that people take is a legal drug and everyone takes Adderall. It. Adderall. Adderall. Yeah. So, I mean, I've I've had friends on Adderall where like yeah, they talk about stuff like this and you're like, wow, you know nothing and you have all the confidence in the world. All right, mm -hmm. certified Adderall, coke boasts should be someone's first album though. <laughs> Well, that's phenomenal. Why don't you email Martin Sclorelli? Maybe he'll do it for his second album. In October 2016, he made another hip hop announcement. Welcome to Halloween. Quote <laughs> If Trump wins, my entire unreleased music collection, including unheard Nirvana, Beatles, and of course Wu Tang, comes out for free. Did he fucking live up to that? He then stated that if Hillary won, he would destroy the Wu Tang album. Wait, what does that even what mean? What does that have to do with anything? I mean, it, it, just attention getting? Is he that's just rubbing crazy. one out while we're all like sitting at the computer waiting for. I mean, what does what Hillary happens? winning have to do with Wu Tang? The Wu Tang's like, hey, motherfucker, that's the only yeah. copy. Yeah. That was the stipulation for how oh. much money. Mm -hmm. There was only one copy of I'm it. I'm with her, see? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and trash it. I'm with her, B, not a me. They had to have made a, a copy of it, though. Like, I'd be like, yeah, have you guys ever seen Go Have you ever seen, if you want a good Twitter account and you like mixed martial arts, Ghostface on MMA might be the funniest Twitter account of all time. It's really it's actually. It's really, really fucking good. Once results came in, Martin jumped on his live stream, playing the intro and the first track, before saying that he was legally not allowed to play the rest of them. Wait, so people have heard the first track? The first track, yeah. Did anyone copy it? And then it's out there, it? but it's shitty quality, because it's, it's through his live stream. Have you heard it? I have not heard it yet. Anyone? No, I haven't. In January 2017, <laughs> he was banned from Twitter for repeated harassment of, female, of a female reporter who wrote an article bashing Trump. I'm just laughing how Ed act, is like, I, I, I don't even need to hear the unheard <laughs> Wu-Tang album. Well, I mean, I've been actively avoiding Wu-Tang altogether as a group. For a minute, when I mean, you run like into they, him at Target. What do you no, mean? No, no, I'm just saying, like, uh, they're they're so. I like I like them solo now. Oh, I, yeah. I think them trying to get together. There's this weird tension, like you know, if you like, yeah, it's like Pink Floyd or any other. Yeah, band, or like a like, Night hey, Rider reunion. It's yeah. like gray haired Hasselhoff with, with this fucked up Pontiac. With yeah, this, you know, it sounds to me like they're your neighbors, and you're like, fuck. I keep on making eye contact with the jizz every time I get a mail. <laughs> he wants to. He just wants to talk. To I mean, sometimes about lawnmowers. That's dude, so boring. Yeah, and, and you God wants to talk to me about shorting stocks. I'm just like, come on, man. And Capadonna's over in the corner. No one's paying attention. To him, but he really wants he's the just, best. And he's just rapping the whole time. Oh, yeah. One man ran trying to get away from it. <laughs> the trial was still months away, but there was one more problem. The courts were having difficulty finding an impartial jury. To illustrate, we have the real transcripts from the jury selection. Oh, fee! And this is the first ever edition what? of uh, Crime Theater Radio. Oh, my God. Da, so, da, da. who wants? So, I have three. I have three scripts here. Who wants to play? So we have the, the rule. The, the, the roles are the judge, um, one group of jurors, and the jurors mixed with the with um, Scarelli's lawyer. I'll do well, Ed. What you're our guest? So, what Wait, do you who, pick? who would you, you like pick? to play? Uh, just give me one. Let's go. Who do you uh, want to be? Do you want to be the judge or some juror or, or uh, some collective jurors? Uh, ju jurors. I'll be jurors. jurors. All right. You are jurors, Chefsky. You want to be the judge? You know, you want to be the judge? You yeah, want to be, be the judge? All right, I'll be the judge of this. 
<laughs> All right. I'll be. So this uh, script provided by Harper's. This is the actual transcript from uh, from uh, the jury from some of the jury selection for Martin Scarelli's trial. And scene. Order, order in the court, you fuck nuts. Okay, that's not written. That there. wasn't. That, that wasn't written, written there. there. Okay, that'd be great if that, that was. Though. That'd be a cool judge, right? Yeah. Judge Beefy. All right. The purpose of jury selection is to ensure fairness and impartiality in this case. If you think you could not be fair and impartial, it is your duty to tell me. All right, juror number one. I'm aware of the defendant, and I hate him. I'm sorry. I think he's a greedy little man. Jurors are obliged to decide the case based only on the evidence. Do you agree? Uh, I don't know if I could. I mean, I, I wouldn't want me on this jury. Number one is excused. Juror number 18. Both of my parents are on prescriptions that have gone up over the past few months so much that they can't afford their drugs. I have several friends who have HIV or AIDS who, again, can't afford the prescription drugs they were able to afford. These charges don't concern drug pricing. Could you decide this case based only on evidence? No, no. Pre presented at this trial and put aside no. anything you, you no. might have heard. Of, oh, no. Sir. Are we going to excuse you from this panel? Juror number 22, come forward, please. Uh, this is the price gouging guy, right? With Th the drugs? This case has nothing to do with drugs. My kids use those drugs. As I said, the case does not concern anything that you might have read or heard about the pricing of certain pharmaceuticals. It affects my opinion of them. I'm going to excuse you. Juror number 40, come up, sir. I'm taking prescription medication. I would be upset if it went by, up by 1,000%. Uh, I saw the testimony on TV to Congress, and I saw his face on the news last night. By the time I came in and sat down and he turned around, I felt immediately I was biased. Okay, we're going to excuse you as well. Juror number 47, please come forward. Uh, he's the most hated man in America. In my opinion, he uh, he equates with Bernie Madoff with the drugs for pregnant women going $15 to $7.50. My parents are in their 80s. They're struggling to pay for their medication. My mother was telling me yesterday how my father's cancer drug is $9,000 a month. <sighs> the case is going to come before you on evidence you must consider before... F you must consider it fairly with an open mind. Let's put it that way. I would find that difficult. And that's based on your parents' experience with medication? It's based on people working very hard for their money. He defrauded his company and his investors, and it's not right. Ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to excuse you, juror number 52, for a more feminine voice, juror number 52. Uh, I mean, when I walked in here today, I looked at him, and in my head, that's a snake. Not knowing who he was, I just walked in and looked right at him. That's a snake. Well, so much for the presumption of innocence. We will excuse juror number 52. Juror number 67. And the fact that he raised the price of, of AIDS medication like such an amount of money, it like disgusts me. I don't think I'll ever be able to forget that. I mean, who does that? Puts profit and self-interest ahead of anything else. Like, it's not a far stretch that he could do what he's accused of. Please go to the jury room and tell them you have been excused. <laughs> juror number 70, motherfuck. I have total disdain for the man. When you go back to how he was able to put so many children... Oh, you have negative feelings? Very. Would those feelings present you from being fair to both sides in this case? Uh, I could be fair to one side, but not the other. Jesus fucking Christ. Juror number 77. From everything I have seen in the news, everything I have read, I believe the defendant is the face of corporate greed in America. We would object... You'd have to convince me he was innocent rather than guilty. I will excuse this juror. Hello, juror 125 fucking thousand. I've read extensively about Martin's shameful past and his ripping off sick people and it hits close to me. I have a mother with epilepsy, a grandmother with Alzheimer's, and a brother with multiple sclerosis. I think somebody that's dealt in those things deserves to go to jail. Okay, just to be clear. He's not being charged with anything relating to pricing of pharmaceuticals. I understand that, but I already sense the man is guilty. Well, I'm going to excuse you. Juror number 144, tell us what you've heard. I heard through the news how the defendant changed the price of the pill by upselling it, and I heard he bought an album from the Wu-Tang Clan for a million dollars. The question is, have you heard anything that would affect your ability to decide this case with an open mind? Can you do that? I don't think I can, because he kind of looked like a dick. You are juror number 144, and we will excuse you. Come forward, juror number 145. Let's try this again. 
I have read a lot of articles about the case, and I think he is guilty as they come. Then I will excuse you from this case. Juror number 10, please come forward. Eh, the only thing I'd be impartial about is what prison this guy goes to. Okay, we will excuse you. Uh, juror number 28. What have you heard that's going to make me excuse you? I don't like this person at all. I can't just understand why he would be so stupid as to take an antibiotic with HIV people need and jack it up 5,000%. Thank you. I would honestly, like, seriously like to go over there. Thank you. That's enough. Is he stupid or greedy? I we, can't understand. We will excuse you. Juror 41, are you coming up? Mm, I was looking yesterday in the newspaper and I saw the defendant. There was just something about him. I can't be fair. There was something that uh, didn't look right. <laughs> All right. I don't know what we're doing here. I'm going to excuse you, juror number 59. How about you? 59? Your Honor, totally he is guilty, and in no way can I let him slide out of anything because... Okay. I've heard enough. Is your attitude toward anyone charged with a crime who has not been proven guilty? It's my attitude towards his entire demeanor and what he's done to people. All right, we're, you're excused. You're and, excused. And he disrespected the Wu-Tang Clan. Yeah, shame on us. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. And that is the first edition of Crime Radio Theater. That was so much fun. Uh, can I uh, ask a question right now? Yeah, sure. That was really the transcript? That's the real transcript. Did, was that, did Martin basically put those people in there, him and his lawyer, get people to specifically to make the trial like not happen or whatever? No, just everyone knew he was a douchebag. And so they, I mean, they were, there was going to be a trial. They just had to go through like 150 people. Did they eventually get people? Oh, no, there's going to be a trial. We're almost there. Oh, the tr okay. Okay. We're right, at the, <laughs> we're, we're right there. Did you like my reference there? Shame on a, and then I stopped. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shame on a Screlly. Yeah. Shame on a Screlly who tried to run game on my belly. Finally, <laughs> I don't know. With, I'll fuck your ass up. Yeah, that's right. With pills. Finally, the trial began in June of 2017. While most attorneys try to defend their white collar clients as upstanding folks who attend church and volunteer at charity events. Oh, the with, heartbeat of America, folks. With Martin, right that would there. be impossible. So Brathman took the opposite approach, arguing that his client was a weirdo, but not technically guilty of a crime because in the end... His investors actually made money. I have to stand up for that, that line at least. Being a weirdo is not a crime. While it wasn't a sound legal argument, they only needed one juror to be convinced. Now, as a quick note, this is true. Like most of investors, especially the ones who took stock in Retrofin, mm -hmm. they ended up making money even though he'd lost all the initial money because mm. his big scam gave them stock in a successful biotech company. Yeah, they're like, so, I want to hit you, but I'm also very grateful for my yeah. guest house. But yeah, but all his fraud was still a problem. <laughs> I have three Bentleys now, so you fuck you, but, you know, keep it coming. So again, this wasn't a sound legal argument. They only needed one juror to be convinced. Okay. But Martin didn't help because he behaved like his usual self. Oh, he, he burst into a room of reporters watching the trial on CCTV to call the prosecutor's junior varsity. He spent every night live streaming his thoughts on the case. The judge issued a gag order. Finally, on August 4th, the jury returned a verdict, finding Martin Scarelli guilty on three of eight counts. Lock him up! Martin and his attorney told the press they were happy, as his acquittal on the most serious charges would probably result in a lenient punishment. Mm. He was released on bail pending sentencing. In fact, one of the things that Martin said was like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll do a year in club fed. Fun. I'll play video games and walk around the, gar the, yeah. the grounds and just Do I have a webcam it. on my iMac in there? Mm. Great. I'll just broadcast all And day. then I'll have all the street cred that I need to launch my rap career. Oh, my God, Ed. You're so fucking right. He set this whole <laughs> thing up so he could get the street cred. Mm -hmm. I told you he's a real Nathan for you. <laughs> but the good times would not last. Oh. On September 5th, Martin Fuckboy Scarelli Woo! put the Wu-Tang album up for sale on eBay. On eBay? The auction closed at just over $1 million, half of what he paid. Ugh. Then he messed up real bad. You could, set, you could spend $1 million on eBay? When he posted on Facebook offering a reward of $5,000 for anyone who could bring him a hair belonging to Hillary Clinton. What? Was he into voodoo That's, now? Yeah. I mean. He I, claimed it was so he could flakes. clone her. <sighs> if you could clone anyone, wouldn't it? Like, why would it? Why wouldn't you just clone the Wu-Tang Clan at that point? Right? Have makes more albums? You've already met a m number of them. Well, it, oh, that's, that, that's got such get-out ramifications. The, the, I just don't want to. The Wu-Tang Clones? The Wu-Tang Clones! <laughs> oh, wow. It's the same abbreviation. <laughs> I'm just saying. Despite, uh, uh, um, Martin immediately ended up with a visit from the Secret Service and back in front of the judge. It's the ghoul. 
ghost face killer. Number 33B. I'm a clone, you see. Despite his pleas that the post was, quote, an opt- awkward attempt at humor or satire, the judge was having none of it. He declared Martin a danger to society, revoked his bond, and sent him to maximum security federal jail to await sentencing. Could he just... He, he, I'm sure you could find a Hillary hair somewhere, right? Like, where did she get in a chick fight? You know what I mean? Like, well, I mean, when you got that much money, you are like a... Uh, uh, having a bunch of money that you can offer to people is like a superpower. Yeah. It's like if, you, if, you, if Bill Gates gets into, a, a, gets into an elevator, presses the button that stops you in between floors, there's a grandma, there's two judges, and there's a police officer, and he's like, I got $100 million. You guys all start fucking each other right now. That would work three times out of five. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I think they have that elevator also, I'm in gonna, Dubai. I'm gonna call now that you know it's a superhero, I'm gonna call Bill Gates my nerd goat. <laughs> yeah, because he can do they can make people fucking elevators you three think times Bill out Gates of five. Has that big of a dark side? Uh I think most people with that much money have that big of a dark side and more. I th- Bill Gates and his wife seem like nice people though. Have hey, you seen an interview uh, with hey, them? I, hey, I, if I was trying to buy my way into heaven, I'd give a bunch of Africa's computers too. That's all I'm saying. Oh, you think he's also making snuff films on the side? Oh, yeah. <laughs> With a very high-def camera. It's not even available to the public. This is 87K. That's right. I got smell vision for these murders. <laughs> Scarelli's assets were frozen. Mm, the sale like of the Wu-Tang album frozen. was mm. canceled. It's a hard rump. On March 5th, 2018, <laughs> the judge ordered Martin to forfeit $7.4 million in assets. If he can't cover it with cash, he'll have to fork over items like a real Picasso his rare music collection, and the Wu-Tang album. <laughs> How excited would you be to be in Wu-Tang and be like, man, we really did make it. You know what I mean? This is really the biggest thing that's ever happened. Yeah, they're, they're using our, our, our albums a fiat currency, basically. Last Friday. <laughs> right? You Last think, Friday. You think anyone in Wu-Tang knows what a fiat currency is, though? Uh, RZA. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. RZA, RZA and 100%. the JZA. The RZA, the JZA, the investor. RZA's probably right in a movie about... Deck. First things first, <laughs> man. You fuck with the worst. Oh, you got it. Oh, investor God. Investor Deck. I'm so glad. Oh, man. I just made it. Fuck on. Oh, investor Deck. I got them phones, y'all. On Friday, March 9th of last week, yeah, Martin returns. finally appeared in court for sentencing. Braffman made one final appeal for leniency. Wait, are you saying this last week? Like yeah, right this now? happened. You're telling us in this room. There's a reason why I called this emergency session recording of crime. Yeah. Because this happened three days ago, four I days ago. I did see something on Bing when I was mm-hmm. Googling something else. I saw you something on Bing when you were Googling? Yeah, because Bing... <laughs> Google doesn't have news on it, and they, they I don't and, like the way they treat a lot Bing's of people better and their employees. And, and Bing, Bing's, you know, Bing's everyone knows Bing's, Bing's, Bing. Bing. Bing is the porn web searcher. I don't, well, I don't go on porn on Bing. That's the that's the only reason to have you, Bing. If you just go to Bing, that's the sound of an erection. First Bing. of all, first of all, Bing, Bing is an acronym. It, 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 someone told me it's actually called because it's not Google. So I was like, all right, that's already funny enough. I love that. So I'm like huh. down with that. Then if you just type in Bing to search, you will get a stream of like the big news stories without having to go to like a Yahoo account. Which is everyone's goal on the internet, right? (laughs) So, four days ago on Friday, March 9th, Martin finally appeared in court for sentencing. Braffman made one final appeal for leniency, saying, quote, There are times when I want to hug him, and there are times when I want to punch him in the face. Your Honor, please make this a time to hug him. But he should not be sentenced solely for being Martin Scarelli. Mm. Apparently, the judge disagreed, giving him seven years in federal prison. Damn. On learning his fate, Martin, America's fuckboy number one Scarelli, who Slayton hates by that nickname, we broke can tell. down crying. Oh, he cried, huh? Uh, we got, we have a new we have a new product that's uh, Scarelli tears. They make, they make you feel good oh, when yeah. you drink them down. Like coconut water, coconut water, Scarelli tears. Yeah, that's the ghost face. Now I mean, new product inside <laughs> Wugu. We got Scarelli tears. <laughs> can I ask you a question though? What's up? Where have his parents been through this whole fucking thing? Uh, still living in the same apartment in Brooklyn they raised him in. Oh, serious? Now I, I the reason why I didn't throw that in as a fuck you Martin thing, yeah. is because I read one quote that says his parents insisted on staying in the apartment, so I didn't want to necessarily blame him for not moving his parents out of their apartment. Sure. So, hey, well, that's the one the not hip hop thing he did. Everybody knows hip hoppers get their fucking mama, mama out house. the projects. Yeah, that's what hip hoppers do. You piece of shit. If he just moved his parents somewhere into New Jersey, he would have a platinum album by now. Maybe his parents, they're, they're, they're artisan like belt makers, and they're just hipsters in Brooklyn, and they want to keep it real from where they're from. They never forgot. So that's, They raised a real piece of shit, so fuck you guys. Hey, this, no, matter, no matter how much loot I get it, I'm saying it in the projects forever. Martin yeah. Shkreli's mom. That's right. <laughs> She's releasing an album next month. So this is the the, the, the end of whatever I know about. I mean, literally, this is up to. I was writing the story yesterday. Yeah. So this is the, the full Martin Scarelli story. Oh, it's awesome. As a little epilogue, uh, Ben Braffman, his attorney, who represents all like every kind of d bag on the planet. Yeah. Uh, 
even though the, t- the trials over, he still has his hands full because his next client rep- he's representing is uh, Harvey Weinstein. Are you serious? Yeah. So he's a uh, kind of a dick. This guy's a, a a bad person. But they let me tell you something. In America, due process. Even if you're a total piece of shit, you do deserve to be represented in court. We have to we have to support that. by a person who seven spe- years, bitch. I'll see you in seven years, yeah. bitch. I mean, even though he paid millions of dollars to a to a shit lawyer, I mean, or a great lawyer, whatever you want to call it, like he's still got justice to serve. He's in seven years. He's gonna come out of there a man, though, right, guys? It's really gonna teach him some lessons. So, if by the way, these are everything that wasn't proven in court is alleged, and if you have an issue with that, you can go to our sources for today's story, including CNN, Harper's Magazine, the New York Times, Vanity Fair, Slate, the Street.com, Bloomberg, CNBC, Reuters, Vice, the New York Times, Yee. the New York Post, and of course, the evil robots uh, at Wikipedia. Wikipedia. <laughs> who, by comparison, you know what today? I'll call them the good robots because, by comparison to this fuck boy, they are uh, they're good. I mean, uh, okay. So well, I, I like to fuck bio bitches, not evil robots. Mm-hmm. Uh, bio babes, please. Bio what babes, you? yeah. You're uh, fired. I'm hip hop. I'm, I'm, I'm more yeah, scrubby. If, if he was real hip hop, he would have called them bio bitches. He would have called them bio bitches. <laughs> That's true. Really, see, he keeps slipping. His mask keeps. Up. Hello, fellow kids. You know, he, his yeah, mask not, keeps he's slipping. Not, he's not holding it up. That's the that's today's story, everybody. That's what happened. Yeah, the scrubby. I, just, I, There's a reason why I, I last minute asked you to come in here today. Oh, the Woot Investor deck. I'm, I'm just, I'm literally gonna go <laughs> I, home I and Photoshop that. that. I love that. That's got to go on one of our stickers, dude. That's so, that's so great. For our sticker of the month club, guys. Investor uh, deck. Oh, that's a yeah, that's a great. Well, guys, th- sign up to our Patreon. Oh yeah, so yeah, dude. If you enjoyed this show, uh, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did because I I was pumped to savage this motherfucker all weekend. If you enjoyed the oh, show great. or others, you can support us on a number of different ways. Uh, you can hit that share button and share this or any other episode with friends of yours, which is fantastic. You can go on iTunes and leave us a five star rating and review, which super helps. You can also go to our Patreon, which now has the sticker of the month club. So. Uh, at our in- entry level, we have, for everybody who's a Patreon supporter, we have weekly bonus episodes with mini crimes, hangouts, whatever it is. Mini crimes. Uh, five oh, bucks a month. Crime. You get all of that. Micro crimes. You- little crimes. And you also get our st- a new sticker every month from crime based on our show, That's whatever right. the fuck's going on. Keeping Chefsky busy with them Photoshop files. Yeah, give, giving Chefsky something to do so he can make Suck some... my busy ass dick, Lane. Dude, I will busy up your dick so hard, bro. That sounds hot. Yeah. You can also, uh, if you want to reach out, you can email the show at crime, crimepodcast at gmail.com with one I or three. Send us story ideas, questions, dick pics, label those for Chefsky. Uh, I understand. Now, look, I understand you might want to send me pictures of Martin Scarelli right now because he is a dick. It's not what I'm talking about, so don't send us him. <laughs> I've seen that douchebag's face enough over the last 48 hours. You can also follow us on all social medias at CrimePod, C-R-I-I-I-M-E-P-O-D. Hit us up, hang out, and also come to this weekend to, the, to motherfucking Crime, crime Live! Live! Oh, so Ooh. excited to see all of our friends it's and supporters. It's going to be so cool. Crime Lives! Is Mark? that what I'm supposed to say, guy? Crime, yeah. crime Lives? Crime Lives, sure, yeah. yeah. yeah this weekend at the Comedy Store, it's going to be a blast. Come on out. And Shevsky has, uh, has one of our reviews for one of those cool people who's going out there, spreading the good word about crime, bro. Okay, this is uh, this is from Utilitarian Femi. Great show, five stars, great lineup of guests, and John is a sexy motherfucker. Read that again, but this time as Ghostface. I don't know vo- Ghostface is... He's going to say not oh, oh, a, a bunch. Yeah. Nah, nah, 95%, mean. 95% of being Ghostface is saying not mean. Not mean, not mean. Uh, uh, ring, 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 Cade, Wait, This is a disaster. <laughs> Super funny. Brit, Brittany, you with guys. W, five stars, interesting stories, and the guys are hilarious. I think she's talking about me. You can follow Ed Greer on all social media at, at Ed Greer Destroys. Ed Greer Destroys. Uh, keep an eye out for all of his dope shit coming up. He's one of the greats, one of our good friends. Yeah, New Negroes on Comedy Central whenever that comes out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah, dude. And we'll see you guys this weekend. See you next week. We love each and every one of you in a personal and emotional way. Hell yeah. Bye, robot. Bye, Mark. Bye-bye, yo, bitch.